My name is Wendy. I work as a formulation chemist in a small pharmaceutical company. Formulation chemists actually develop the pharmaceutical products that you see on the shelf. We'll take it from marketing who will determine what type of product that they'd like to have and the formulator will go into the lab and actually create that product. Um, initially, we'd start off by researching the project, what type of um, ingredients we're going to use, what are the rules that govern those types of products, and then we'll come up with a starter formulation. After that, we'll go into the lab and we'll start mixing, as you can see, um, putting the ingredients together until we get a product that looks good. After that, we'll test it to make sure that you have enough of the actives in there and um, that it can be around throughout the shelf life of the product. After that, we'll um, put it on stability and if it's um, stable and there are no problems with the formulation, then we take it to the manufacturing floor. We'd um, write the batch sheets and we'd stand over the manufacturing workers and ensure that they make the product just the way we designed it in the lab. And after that, we would watch the packaging and the testing and oversee all of that. Um, one of the things about a formulation chemist is that you not only have to be um, prepared to work in the lab, but you have to be a part of a team that would consist of marketing people, people from manufacturing and production, and people from quality. So you have to be able to get along with people and be able to express your ideas. Another area of formulation chemistry is that you have to be able to cost your product because if marketing wants an um, inexpensive product and you've designed a Mercedes-Benz product, then they're not going to be very happy with that. So you have to speak to your raw material suppliers, get the cost in on it, and ensure that your product is saleable with the cost. Another area that um, we're responsible for is to troubleshoot existing products. If there are problems with a product on the market and there's a lot of customer complaints, the formulation chemist will work with the quality assurance personnel to determine what the problems are with that product and look at ways to solve that. So you, again, would have to research what the guidelines are on what are the regulations with those existing products, look back on the batch sheets, what did they do during the manufacturing process, and see if there's anything that you can determine that caused the product to have problems. And then you go ahead and solve those problems, whether by um, changing the formula itself or by changing the manufacturing process. Um, we're also involved in what is called process validation. When you're getting ready to launch, you have to oversee three formulations, three batches of the same formulation to ensure that the factory can um, produce that product consistently at least three times. That is one of the requirements of the FDA. The formulation chemist really has to um, be involved in what the rules and regulations are with the FDA because the industry is heavily regulated and you have to keep current with what is going on with the FDA. Okay, the qualifications for the job is at minimum a chemistry degree in um, undergrad and preferably a PhD in like something like pharmaceutical sciences or even chemistry or biologics. What is most important is that you do have some kind of internship where you study under a formulator and learn the skills because most of the things that you'll be doing you won't find in books. You will learn it from another formulator. The good thing is that there's a lot of literature on it so if you start off with just a bachelor's degree you can pretty much read your way into formulation, and um, but I would recommend now that you get a PhD in something like chemistry or pharmaceutical sciences. 
Um, one of the things that you'd like also is the ability to do technical writing because you do have to draft a lot of standard operating procedures and technical um, papers that will go along with your job. So if you have good writing skills, that's definitely a bonus. Also as a formulator, formulation chemists are, I would like to say they are probably the most creative um, chemists there are. Usually you think of chemists, you think of somebody in a lab tinkering, you know, by themselves. But the formulator really has to work with pretty much all the departments and they have to be able to relate to them. So if you have people skills, that's definitely a benefit. The best part of the job is the creative aspect of it. It's the ability to see something progress from the concept stage and the idea stage on right through to the market stage where it's actually a product. If your product is an over-the-counter product, then you can actually get to walk into the stores and see something that you know you created. So that's one of the best parts of the job. Um, the other stage is just being creative. Um, looking at how you can make your product yours and give it your particular flair. It's almost like being an artist and creating a piece of art. And some formulators get really attached to the work that they do. I'd say the worst part of the job is if you're working on a project and you have an active which is just really hard to, to work with and you need to get that stable. It can be very challenging. Um, you know, you'll spend a lot of time in the lab because you have to get it just perfect. And um, that can be challenging. And there are a lot of ups and downs with it because as a formulation chemist, you tend to be a little creative. And so if your experiments are not working out, then you kind of take it personally, um, like your child isn't behaving. So. Um, I'd say that's the worst aspect of the job. And um, of course, in any company, if there is a, like, out of spec and, and you have to, to find the answer as to why there was a problem with particular batches, I think that could be also challenging. Um, other than that, you know, you're, you're always working with different products. Um, you're never, you know, stagnant. You're relating with different people on all different levels from the unskilled factory worker right up to somebody in like a compliance manager or a CEO if you want to get them to buy um, equipment to make your job easier. Okay, my final advice if you want to pursue a job as a pharmaceutical formulator is to um, make sure you get some kind of internship when you're in college, even if it means just volunteering and doing it for free. Um, you know, just apply anywhere for some kind of summer internships. Also, you could probably work in the chemistry department in your university. That's another area where you could get um, free experience and get that on your resume, doing some kind of research, because the competition is very, um, very strong out there and therefore you need to find a way to distinguish yourself. Now it depends, you know, there are very different tiers in formulation chemistry. You could be, you could start at the bottom with a bachelor's degree and work your way, way up, you know, but if you do want to get to the top rung of the formulators, you really would want to pursue like your, your PhD and also try to take some type of writing course because the, the more senior you are, the better you have to be able to write these um, papers. Computers, of course, you always want to be very um, fluent in you know, using the basic Excel, Microsoft Word, even PowerPoint, because you may have to do some kind of presentation. Um, be very skilled at internet searches, because sometimes you have to seek out raw material suppliers, um, you have to really go through like the FDA website, which can be like a maze, you know, to find the information that you need, the correct regulations. And um, also, you know, be a people, you'd have to be a people person, know that you're going to be creative. And um, 
that's it.